Hey guys, I'm Sean Stafford. I'm a two-time fitness world champion, business owner and trainer for the last 20 years, give or take. And probably I'm best known for being one of the OG fitness influencers in we, this space. We didn't say brag. <laughs> You're just bragging. Oh, was that bragging? <laughs> joking. That was perfect. That was perfect. Do you want to? Do you want to know yeah. frustratingly for everything that I may or may not have achieved in yeah. the 20 years I've been doing this? Yeah. Do you know what I'm best known for? Training me. Incorrect. Okay. What is it? What is it? What are you best known for? <laughs> Two things. Oh, I know one of them. One is looking like Fernando Torres. Yeah. <laughs> for being for being a jacked Fernando Torres. Yeah. <laughs> so the, to, to the point where Yeah, tell you, the story is great. Go on Google. Yeah. I invite people to do this. Go on Google and just type in Fernando Torres and go to the images. Like half of them are of me. <laughs> it's not even him. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. It's so funny. There was a viral thing that went round, wasn't there's a it? There's a cup. So there's a video of me before one of my bodybuilding shows back in the day mm. where I did like a pose routine and all that sort of stuff. And then there's like <laughs> Lad Bible or Esquire or whoever's done it has the big ones. Kind of done all the big uh, ones. All the big ones. <laughs> all the big ones. All the big ones. Mashed up this like all kind of retired footballers getting fat like, <laughs> Ronaldo, like fat Ronaldo and like Sammy and Nasri when they've just packed on a load of pounds after yeah. and they've gone like Torres and just like me doing like bodybuilding poses and people actually genuinely think it's him um you went viral That's didn't you billions of views like it's do you know if he do you know if he's aware of it he is aware of it because have you ever met him I have met him really um I've actually doubled for him for oh, a few wow. things you haven't told me this well, we save it for the potty job. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, um, <laughs> well, how, how does that work? So you, you double bodied for him. I did, body, you, I did you play him. in a few games? Did you tap out and you played for him? So, yeah, pretty much. So what <laughs> happens is, like, basically what happened on the intro for EA Sports, like FIFA 2013. Yeah. Obviously, the, the big players fly in for an hour. Mm. And that's their commitment. But, like, what they need is they need you there for days, right? For all the sort of wide angle stuff. So yeah. anything that's close that you can tell it's him <laughs> is it's him. It? Yeah. And then anything that's kind of <laughs> blurred slightly further back is me. And the best thing was So it could be anyone really. <laughs> it could be like because it has to it has to still look still a blurred. little bit like you. I could and do it. Yeah, to be fair, you absolutely I, could. Well, Jamie does it for Judge Rinder actually, <laughs> really. We have you a know, Judge in the FIFA 14 video. <laughs> Whenever Judge Rinder is slightly blurred, it's always me. Do, do you want to know the interesting thing? Like yeah. the the body double for Rooney was unbelievable. Really, like really? He genuinely looked exactly like Wayne Rooney. And I don't know whether that's a curse or whether it's a blessing. I don't think but, that's a good thing, is it? Well, this guy gets mad amount of work sure. because so he's you know he's going straight to the bank. So it's it was actually that really good. that guy who slept with all the prostitutes <laughs> wasn't Wayne Rooney. He well, gets you know Rooney what? gets all the blame for it. Do you know what? He's like, it's my body double. It's not me. <laughs> he he's missed a the trick there, hasn't he? Both he he has absolutely missed a trick. Yeah, like, he had a perfect fall yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was I just, available for a paycheck. I just like the idea of all these body doubles turning up and like. Mm. So you're Rooney, you're Torres. <laughs> I don't that's, understand that's exactly what it was. And we went to wow, Upton Park, which crazy. is like uh, West Ham's ground at the time, and we were there yeah. for like five days. Yeah. Whereas if you were going to get Rooney or. Thomas Hummels or Kaká or whoever was a big player. Yeah. Then it would cost you, they, well, A, they wouldn't be able to do it because they've got to go in for training and stuff. So they would literally, the big names would fly in for like an hour, mm. shoot all the like close stuff and mm. then leave it to us to. What's the point? Because I understand you doing that for, you know, being for photos and things, but when you get like celebrity lookalikes and you, they, yeah. they, you pay them to just come to your party and look like Simon Cowell or whatever it is, what, what, I don't understand what the appeal of that is. Well, I think it's humorous, right? Isn't it? It's like fun. Is it, it's, is it's it? funny. Yeah, I think it is because you're getting like a look like a Simon Cow. It's like oh, like that's funny because then you get photos with them. I think that's. I, I phoned up a um, body double for me once <laughs> to see how much I would cost. I went out for. Yeah. And the guy responded saying, oh, he hasn't worked for a long time. <laughs> like no one had booked me <laughs> for ages. And then I started joking with him about the other cast of Made in Chelsea, how if I could book them, he goes, oh, they're never used. It was actually quite like a depressing conversation <laughs> that I had. So wait, so you get a call up saying you'll be Fernando Torres's body double. Yeah. And, and so you then do the whole thing. So what other people are there? Who do you have? You have, you have Wayne Rooney. Wayne Rooney was there. there was, and do you know what? There was a guy, uh, there was a guy, a footballer, he used to play for Borussia Dortmund. I think he 
played for the German national team called Thomas Hummels. Really yeah, 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 yeah. Center back. Yeah. Yeah, great. And, and so when the double for Hummels rocks up, he's a model. <laughs> he's yeah, he's right? an absolute so, stud. So, so yeah. that, he's, he's an absolute winner. <laughs> and, and so like we obviously get to meet. Um, so when they fly in, you go, yeah. oh, this, is, this is your guy, this is your guy. Yeah. And Hummels was over the moon with his guy. He was just like, <laughs> oh, I've never, seen a, I've never seen a double that looks more like me. And I'm just like... <laughs> This guy's a catwalk model. It must be quite. That looks a little bit like you, but he was over the moon. It Hummels must be, is um, over the moon yeah. with his body double. <laughs> it must be weird to meet someone who has been classified as your body double. Yeah. It must be weird. I think I think that's why Torres was a little bit standoffish. Yeah, because it must have been because we we at the. Do you keep in touch with him? No, no. He does. Whenever, well, he was whenever, he was whenever, pissed off. He was like, oh, for fuck's sake. I wouldn't say he was annoyed. He wasn't as happy as Hummels was. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it is what it is, you know, like. You got to take the rough, the rough of the smooth. Wait, wait, right? surely what's and the other thing is, is that you're known from a uh, so, sideman. Yeah. So the other, the other, like mm. the thing that I get recognised more than ever. Yeah. Is from appearing in a couple of sidemen videos. So wow. when it comes to they, they've done like strength test videos on YouTube. Yeah. And I didn't really know who the sidemen were. Mm. Like I knew one of them because he was at Gymshark and I was at Gymshark. So we were friends on that level. And then he just gave me a call one day and said, hey, can me and a couple of the boys come down to your gym and we'll shoot a video and it'll go on YouTube. And I was like, mm. yeah, of course, like no problem at all. Mm. They post a video and I think it gets 10 million views in the first hour. And I'm yeah. just like, who the heck are these guys? <laughs> yeah. And then I look into it and they've got like a combined audience of like yeah, six crazy. million or something ridiculous. Yeah. And so now I remember I can... um, Jack Whitehall telling me that he did a video with the Sidemen and he said he, he he walked down the street with a couple of them yeah. and he's hung out with like real Hollywood A-listers, but he said he's never experienced what, like walking down the street with the side men. Yeah. They're so famous. And, it, and it, so now I, with everything I have or haven't done in my 20 year career, I'm known for being in the side men video. Yeah. Which is wow! Which is, 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 it that, is it you, is it is it that cult that they? Yes. they I think they're... it's pretty huge. Yeah, right, massive. Like more than <sighs> more than you would ever imagine. Mm. Really, yeah. mm. and it's great. Like fair play to them. They're, they're like yeah. a K, they're like a K-pop band, aren't they? Yeah, <laughs> just they're, like they're, yeah. they're massively famous. <laughs> they are but like a, never... the British K-pop. <laughs> yeah, who, who was that K-pop band? Who was it? Uh, There's a band called BTS. Yeah, they're yeah, BTS. That, but they're yes. like so famous. Yeah. But we, we I don't, don't know who they are. I don't. I don't. Well, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. I hate to. I hate to break it to you, but I think. I think they've they've broken up. Have they? Yeah, yeah Sean, don't don't bring shit like that on this don't podcast. Don't bring that kind of energy. What the this. hell is that they, about? They're all focusing on their solo careers. <laughs> <laughs> it's always great when people try and go solo. I quite like it. Um, Sean, uh, listen, but you you've done lots of things, and also big news is that you're my you, me and you are training together. We're we not are. training together. Are we training together? How does it work? I would say yes. We're training together. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Is that how it work? Well, we it's we, more we that you're training Jamie, isn't correct. it? Correct. Yeah. If we're Jamie's not really teaching you much, right. is he? Yeah, I am. On life. What have yeah. you picked yeah, yeah. up from On Jamie? <laughs> Loads it's, of stuff. A little, it's a little bit semantics, but uh, yes, I'm training Jamie. So okay. the way it came about was I've trained Spenny, who's um, a good mate of Jamie for a long time. Yeah. And when he went away to do Everest, he basically said, don't give away my slots in the morning. Yeah. Um, and I was like, well, have you got anyone that can step in? And, and Jamie, he's like, Jamie's getting married. He'll love this. Mm. Jump in. So, so are then... you doing like a wedding glow up? Well, my thing was is this. That is, what it is? Like my thing was this is that I literally my Sophie, my fiance was like, uh, oh, look, you, you don't look your greatest. You don't moment. look great. She honestly said that. I told you, I've said this story before. I got on top really? of it. We were we were gonna have sex and I got on top of it and she went, Oh, get on with it. And I went, This is not like this is not right. This yeah. is like not this, this sexy. This is not the J Badger. I this know is about. not like like I'm like a. I, I thought I was like some sort of god, and I was like I look pretty good. I, was, I feel pretty yeah. great. Anyway, she was like, well, maybe maybe. So I then Spencer phoned me up and said you should take this stop with Sean. Um, so I was like, okay, let's do it. Met Sean and started and then Spencer doing... was like, just get Sean to sleep with Sophie. <laughs> <laughs> just, she'll love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sean was my body double for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> and she worked out really well. <laughs> Sophie's uh, Sophie's much happier. Yeah, 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 actually, feel much better with each other now. Uh, and she never knew. <laughs> but um, so we started. So I went to you. We started then doing. I have never done weights before. Like I, I was one of these guys who was just like didn't think about weights and they were a good thing. Couldn't really be bothered to do it. Thought anyone like putting like a, a bar on your shoulders in the morning and doing a squat. I was like, get out of here. I can't be bothered with that. Started doing it. And I think it's, it's probably the greatest thing that I've picked up in the last, most recent years. And I don't really know why. 
and and I'm in shape and all these different things. But I, I don't know. And so that's why I want to get. Why is doing something like going to the gym? And we know the the benefits, endorphins, yada yada, all that kind of stuff, right? But why going to the gym and learning weights and doing stuff? Why is that so beneficial to the human brain, body, everything? Do you think? Um, it's a really good question, actually. I think some of it would come from a level of progression. So I think when you start on that sort of weightlifting journey, you don't start in the middle. You start at the bottom and you, mm. you work yourself up over time. So there's that overarching sense of progression, turning up, getting better day on day, week on week, month on month. That's very rewarding from a, from a psychology point of view. You know, you can look back and objectively you were doing 60 kilos a month ago you're now doing 80 kilos it's progression yeah so yeah. you get that which i think is is very rewarding from a sort of extrinsic point of view yeah you're stronger you, you will feel better as well and then there's the almost the visual element of it which comes with if you're training and you're following a progressive plan you're getting stronger but your body will respond to that stress as well and you'll start to not only be stronger but you'll start to look stronger that feeds yeah. into some sort of, you know, people will notice. That vanity, oh, you're, maybe. Your you know are looking bigger, mm. or your shoulders are looking Big bigger, time, or you're, yeah. Looking, yeah. you're mm. looking younger, is what a lot of people get. Why yeah. do people look younger? Because I think when you age, right, I think a lot of that would be, you know, you, you lose a little bit of muscle mass, you, you put on a bit of body fat, and I think when you start weight training, that reverses, right? Because you all of a sudden, your body composition changes, you, your lean tissue goes up, which is a sign of youth. And mm. your body fat comes down, which is a sign of you. So automatically, you start to look and feel younger, more mobile, more agile, more virile. So your confidence often goes up. Virile? Like what is virile? virile? What is virile? virile. But what is virile? Sexual, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you feel horny? Well, a little. Well, Do you use your testosterone go up? Yeah, so. Sean is constantly you, masturbating. <laughs> mm. Brilliant. <laughs> giving, my, giving my secrets away. Did giving it? my secrets away. <laughs> Oh, Sean, stop it. Um, but it's one of those things where like, your testosterone levels will decrease. That is age. why you do get hornier. You, you do get hornier. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Really? So, so if, if we go back to the question, that's kind of like, why does it feel so good? And why do people get so into it? And there's a load of reasons. It's, it's yeah. you look better, you feel better. There's progression. You kind of, you buy in and you kind of get out what you put in. But there, yeah. also, there also comes a point where it gets very challenging. So mm -hmm. like once you're not on the bottom rung of the ladder anymore and you, you know, you're kind of past that middle phase, when you're standing at the top of the ladder and you're working at what would be incredibly high levels of your maximum. Mm -hmm. So like we're really pushing the boundaries of what you can do physically. Yeah. That's when you learn a lot about yourself mm. spiritually, emotionally, mentally, yeah. because you're, you know, everyone can live in a comfort zone and be quite, be quite confident and comfortable here. But when you're being pushed to perform here, Mm. That's when the that's when the money is printed. That's when your your the changes are really going to start to kick wow. off because you're working at such a high capacity of your potential that the stress you're putting on yourself forces change. And yeah. that's when you that's when that exponential growth. And when you see people, we call it like a tipping point. When people are structurally balanced and they're strong and they're fit, when they get to that point where they can regularly work at an incredibly high sort of percentage of their maximum. That's when that's when you really see results. Mm. It, 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 it's it's true about that comfort, right? That's why I do cryotherapy and cold therapy. Is because the whole point of that is that you stress your body in the morning or whenever you do it, you mm. put yourself out of your comfort zone. So then, when stress does come into your life, whatever anxiety, depression, insomnia, whatever these things are, um, you're able to do them much easier because your body's used to stress. We put ourselves in such comfort that we actually don't stress ourselves out, and and that's why freaking gymming is good. Tom, what do you take from that? Do you hit the gym? Well, I mean, I, I do go to the gym, but I'm not a weights person. But sure. but maybe I mean, I feel like I'm maybe Jamie before he started doing the weight training. Well, I, I looked at because I like to I like running, <clears throat> but that's not weights, obviously. It's but different, I, man. It's a different. It's, 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 it's like a different, different. It's a different thing, and it's not. Necessarily I've always enjoyed running. Better or worse. Yeah. Like if you're running, what you'll get good at is running. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So like, yeah. it, it's one of those things where, like, if you want to get fitter and you want to get better at running, like, funnily enough, you have to run. Mm. So it's one of those things where like, it's very specific, like what the, the task you're, you know, giving yourself and the stress you're putting on your body is very specific to that mm. sort of that discipline. Whereas like when you're doing more functional work and when you're doing more sort of strength and conditioning work, the results you'll get are very, very different. Did you have like a, a moment where you decided to, have you always been very fit or did you have a moment where you decided to change and become 
very into the yeah gym. what was his tipping point so i've always been very sporty so i played sport at a reasonably high level like all for, through school and then through fernando torres yeah yeah, yeah. yeah I, played Chelsea. I, I, played, I played for liverpool then chelsea a little bit for spain won a world cup premiership <laughs> played premiership football for about 10 years yeah, but, yeah and then i just started going to the gym <laughs> going back to fernando torres you know that he has actually opened up his own gyms and is now actually quite jacked is he actually really yeah. so i'm not saying that <laughs> he's gonna be all upset by I'm that i'm not saying he's trying to be my body double or anything <laughs> but i'm just saying um yeah but Julie, what was the tipping point for you because you, you you your your library of things that you've done is you know i'm gonna get it's the what is the you were the best bodybuilder in the world so what I was, was it called? Because Jamie, before Jamie, you Jamie came in, he said um, IVF. He he's an, me the IVF. IVF. He said IVF, and then he said IBS, but it's not IBS or IVF. Correct. Both of those things, uh, I have not <laughs> had or yeah. used. You're the IVS, IBS world champion. Correct. So <laughs> the the federation was called the WBFF, um, which WBF. is like the World Bodybuilding and Fitness Federation. Okay. Um, and what I did was pretty much a category called men's physique, which. I think if you're going to break it down, <laughs> yeah. So if you, I think if you're going to break it down, it's not bodybuilding. It it would be lightweight bodybuilding. Okay. So it's not the guys that are super jacked and like just enormous. Mm. It's kind of much more mainstream. So there's an element of marketability. There's an element of stage presence. What they're judging you on is could this guy be on the cover of men's health or muscle and fitness could he sell protein shakes gym equipment lululemon mm. uh merchandise adidas is are you an influencer when no is, is, that, is that what i'm thinking when you're a set um, this was kind of pre <laughs> that was pre this was almost like at the onset or like the birth of influence of this kind yeah. of these competitions were wow. kind of coming out from that it was kind of like if you're going to be a fitness model mm. what would you look like and that was kind of the judging criteria. So they judged you on symmetry, condition, stage presence, marketability, all of that sort of stuff. Um, but truly, the, the thing which I find interesting is how, when does that happen in your mind? You were sporty at school, yeah. you, you play rugby, you go to, you know, you, you, you go to Oxford, yeah. uh, all these kind of things. Um, you know, you, you, you're, you're super smart. And then you, start, you you start hitting the gym and doing that, enjoying it. And then you decide, right, I'm going to commit myself. Yeah. To this period where I'm going to go and basically uh, just refine my body to a place which is impeccable, and then yeah. go and compete. So, do, do you know what it was? What was it? It was a it was a dare. Get out of here! <laughs> it was was a, it actually? It was actually a, a that's dare a dare that's gone really far. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Give up now. Someone went back down. That's pretty yeah, much me. Yeah. I'm that stubborn. Yeah. Um, so, so, how did that start? So, someone came up to you. Yes. So I just retired from playing rugby. Like I'd, I'd been injured. I'd, I'd kind of retired from 15s. I then retired from sevens. So I was a little bit lost. With so is that what you were going to do? You were going to be a rugby player? Not, well, that's what you, want, what you wanted really. to do? That, not really. Okay. That was kind of like, I, I was always a trainer. And okay. I kind of, since I, you know, I was, I played semi-professional rugby for about eight months. Okay. Right. And it was one of those ones where. <laughs> you mean I, football? <laughs> I got injured. I got injured. But if I hadn't got injured, I definitely would have been found out for not being Yeah, me good. too. I got injured as well. <laughs> you got injured. <laughs> you injured. Got, got injured. Rugby career taken away. Yeah, I did. That happened to me. That actually did happen. But it was one of those ones where if I hadn't got injured, I definitely would have been found out for not being good enough. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it was it was kind of because you just in my couldn't life. catch. <laughs> um, and I was tr I was training, but not really not really enjoying my training. I didn't really have anything to train for. And then a girl that I was working with at the time, she just competed in the female equivalent, and mm. she said, "You know what? You would actually be really good at this." Mm. I was like, "You know what? I just don't know if I can be bothered." And she How was old like, are you at this point? Um, I would have been. Like 28. Oh, okay. So okay. I'm quite old. Yeah. So 28. Right. Um, and she said, you should do this. And I said, yeah. okay, when's the next show? She goes, the British Championships in five months time. Mm. I said, fine. Great. Let's do it together. Okay. And so the, basically, and it was kind of like a, who's going to do better? Like, mm. is she going to do better? Or am I going to do better? And so we both trained for the show and it was the British Championships. And so like I learned, immersed myself in it, dieted super hard, trained super but, hard. Well, take me through the training process or something like that. So so uh, how how lean do you have to get? And what is the diet? What is this, the strict it's regime? Super, you have to go super lean. So like in terms of the, in terms of the training, it, the, the training didn't really change that much. Like the volume was still there, but it, what was meticulous was the diet. So like mm. the discipline around what you eat and being in a calorie deficit. So basically, 
giving your body less than it kind of needs <laughs> yeah. on a daily basis. <laughs> Basically right? starving so your body. Intense. It's so intense. So it's, yeah, yeah. It's, if, we're, if we're breaking it down, it is pretty much starving yourself. Is it true? I mean, I don't know anything about this, but is it true that the diet is more important than the gym? For Re fat loss, for sure. Yeah. But for weight loss and for fat loss, absolutely. You can. So could you work out like three hours every day and if, if you were still eating crap, you wouldn't, nothing would change? Absolutely. Yeah. And, that, and that's the that's where I've been going. You just get bigger. You'd almost your neck and your yeah, like. You that's just probably get the biggest misconception that people have. They think they can outwork a bad diet. Yeah, and you just can't. Mm. Like the the science of it is, if you're looking to lose weight and if you're looking to especially drop body fat, the diet is key, and you've got to be in a slight, like a a small but significant calorie deficit day in day out for probably three to four months. Oh to my see, god, that's miserable. Yeah, it, it can be quite miserable, but it's also one of those things where, and you would have probably experienced a little bit of this over the last couple of months. It's like when you start to see the results, you start to get that feedback of, wow, this is working. Then you, you, you start enjoying it. it. Yeah, you double down on it. Yeah. And it's a little bit of like a... You so know, do you give Jamie, so you work out with him, do you also give him a diet plan as well? We do. So at the moment, it, it's we're kind of on a journey of we're trying to build up a load of strength in Jamie. So it's kind of get trying to get him mm. stronger, get him, you know, increase his muscle yeah. mass, there you go. all that sort of stuff. But there'll come a time when we tighten the screw from a nutritional point of view. But what mm. we've done so far is Jamie, Jamie works with a, a meal prep company that I'm involved with. And I've been- Fresh I've, Fitness, baby. Fresh Fitness. Shout baby. out to those guys. They're um, great. They are great. They're great. They're the boxes. They're the little yeah. boxes that arrive in your doorstep. Apart yeah, from, these are the good. ones that keep getting stolen from the front of my house. But wait, Andre, before we get into that, I just want to understand stand just quickly with your training so you yeah. go you go into the competition your your calorie deficit for how long for a significant amount of time so it depends depending on where you start what your starting point is and yeah. where you need to be obviously if you if you're in a calorie deficit of say three and a half thousand calories a week so 500 a day it's not it's not crazy like you, yeah. you probably will feel it for the first week two weeks but then yeah. your body adapts right so um if, if you're in that level of deficit, you will probably lose between one and two pounds, half a kilo to a kilo a week in terms mm. of weight and body fat. Mm. So it's one of those things where depending on where you start from or where you want to be, just give yourself that amount of time using those sort of metrics as how long it will take. Mm. Um, and that's basically how you do it. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, are you training twice a day? Is the training up? So like, how do you, you can get... do? Yeah. So what a lot of people do in order to um not get down to a point where you're barely eating so like you can increase the amount you're training to burn calories right because it's calories in calories out yeah that's, that's the and the energy balance side of it is is the whole the whole shebang so if you don't want to reduce what you're eating too much you can increase the amount you're moving mm -hmm. so that's what some people do so it's a balancing act between the two if you've got time and energy and you can train more often or you can train for longer means the amount of food you have to reduce is less. So some people prefer to do that. It's, it's just a different strategy. And what's this thing about in the two days before the actual event, you you stop drinking you water? Like, yeah, you drink like a bottle of white wine right? or something like that. This so is old all, school. It's, is that, that old that's school? So old. One of my favorite true? documentaries, Pumping Iron. Have you watched Pumping Iron with Arnold Schwarzenegger? I think that's maybe where I heard it from. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was great. But he said you, it, you dehydrate yourself so your muscles contract or something. Well, you dehydrate yourself so there's less water under the skin. But that, basically, this is an insane the, level of like, but we're talking, a, we're talking about like, this is like competition yeah, level. This is, this is different. Yeah. Um, and it's actually the more, the more you learn about it and the more you do it, the more you learn what responds well for your body. Dehydrating myself has never really worked. I felt terrible. Mm. I looked worse. So it was never something that as a strategy I did going into competition. Wow. So it changes for each person. It's different for every person, but it's also like the more you do it, I competed as a professional for five years. So it's kind of like- the So are you, are you, you like play. less jacked now than you were when you were oh, competing? Almost. Have you not seen in, pictures of Sean? I don't in, think I've seen infinitely photos. Infinitely less jacked. Hey, when yeah. Sean was like in his, like in, in, he's training in his prime, honestly, it looked like some- like an alien. Like a Greek Weird, guard. like, action man. It was, like, did you so like, ripped. Did you kind of, like, paint... Did they, they put makeup on your abs and stuff like that? And... Didn't didn't need it. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, no, but you do, um, you do, you do wear, like, a, a... You wear a more aggressive tan than I've got on now. Yeah. We'll, we'll go that far. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, that's insane. And so, um, but, the, you know, one of these things that where it became bodybuilding, right, became one of these amazing things because of Pumping Iron, the documentary. Yeah, Arnold Schwarzenegger. That massively popularised it. Oh, my God, insane. Were those Did guys you see that bit in that documentary where he um does, doesn't he miss his father's funeral because he had to train that day? That was yeah. Is that was, a myth was, or no? I think 
Because well, he wouldn't take a day off training. I think I think it was different. I think his I think he was relatively estranged from his father at the time. Um, and this is I, I, that is I, I, I'm, 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 that's insane. That's insane. I'm remembering this, having not yeah recent, seen it for a while. Recently seen it or, or read about it. Um, as far as I'm aware, like he was relatively estranged from his father, and his father was in Austria. He was in America. Yeah, and it was like the week before a show. So to fly and fly and all that. I yeah, think, I think he did miss his father's funeral. It's mad, isn't it? Do you think he regrets that in the future? I like think maybe I should have gone know. to that. But, like, but uh, would... that would be a good question to ask him. Well, he's coming on private plans next week, so we'll <laughs> yeah, so actually ask him when he comes on. The governor. Yeah, the governor. Good, good to see you. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Jamie. Yeah. I've been, <laughs> Arnold, oh my, if you just look down the lens, your... Arnold, just introduce yourself. <laughs> <laughs> just great. So, but it's insane. It's, with these guys, though, uh, were these guys taking steroids back in the day? Oh, yeah. Really? So the Mr. So, so it's the, not that natural. Like yeah. So what's the difference between Mr. Universe and, and what you were doing? There's loads of, there's loads of, so that's Mr. Olympia. So the big bodybuilding show, like the most famous bodybuilding show in the world is Mr. Olympia. Mm. Right? And that's undrugged, it's undrug tested. So they don't drug test you. So, so, yeah. so is this is still a thing? Is it still a thing? Yes, yeah, it's huge. huge. So they they just think they just allow you can take as many drugs as you want. Have we not seen Ronnie Coleman, who was Correct. like seven times world champion or uh, whatever he seven was? Seven time Olympia champion. Seven time yeah. Olympia champion. This dude, okay, it's I, I so remember, dangerous though, isn't mate, it? This dude back in the day, Ronnie Coleman, he's this gigantic guy. He was he was bench pressing how much and squatting how much? So he squatted eight hundred kilos. Okay, that's, that's <laughs> nearly think, a think, that's nearly a ton. No, sorry, it might have been eight hundred pounds. It might have been eight hundred pounds. Let me have a look. It's a uh, lot. How much did Ronnie but Coleman was, Coleman squat? So Ronnie time, Coleman Jamie, squatted like, eight hundred pounds. Yeah, so four hundred kilos. But he was at the time he was like the world's <laughs> strongest bodybuilder. So he that's was, a lot, right? Four hundred kilos. <laughs> that's a lot. It's a lot. An awful lot. Yeah, and it was, and he was, he was an outlier. Not all bodybuilders are that strong, but he was mm. at the time like one of the strongest bodybuilders on the planet. Yeah, and you know, he's kind of paying the price for it now. He's had three, three or four hits. His body is—he can't even walk. His body is wrecked. You know, you were saying earlier that it's very addictive. Once you get to a certain level, it becomes very addictive. Is that why those people get that? Because they just can't, there's, they're, they're hooked on it. I think, I think there's an element of that. But I also think with somebody like Ronnie, he was, he was a phenomenon, right? And there would have been, you know, he was a, almost a once in a generation type of talent. And mm. therefore, it's almost like the accolade that comes with that you're always pushing that envelope. You know, you, mm. went, you know, you work yeah. at that percentage of your capacity, which we were talking about earlier. And when it is that high, like you are flirting with disaster, right? Yeah. Because you're, you know, you're, you know, you're, you, you mess up on a 400 kilo squat, your discs yeah. are in the next room. Yeah. Oh, they, is that your, really yeah, that your bad? Your knees are done. Like you're, you know, it, it puts an, an incredible amount of stress. 400 on kilograms. Everything in your body. That yeah. is. What is Spencer Matthews bench? Just for, for bench. So Spenny's quite strong on the bench. Like he's up at like one forty-two. It's quite a lot. Yeah. and a half, which a is a lot. Yeah. For his body weight, he's ninety odd kilos. So like it's a lot. Yeah. But just quickly put it into into to context. So what weighs? Um, things that weigh about nine things that weigh about four hundred kilograms. Okay, you ready for this? Um, uh, a, a, a two dumpsters. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. two dumpsters, um, a hooded seal. A hooded seal. <laughs> um, like fridges. An like American a, bison. That's oh my God. That is. Like, a, like an American fridge oh my freezer. God. Like yeah. A, a, probably 200 kilos. Yeah. That's two of those. It's like yeah. two American fridges. A telephone <laughs> pole. <laughs> that's what, horses, horses. I think that'd be a small horse. Benchy or A grand anyway. piano. That that's is insane. insane. Yeah. What was the highest you ever did? On... Ben, bench press. what did you, what's the high, when you were in your peak competing? So I, I, did, I did 150 kilos. That's heavy. At 83 kilo body weight, which yeah. is quite heavy. That is so. And I squatted, I squatted about 180. Right. And I deadlifted about 205. So it's not, if you look at the, the, the broader world of people being strong, mm. it's not, it's not even scratching the surface. That's, that's not even strong. But yeah. where, but the competitions I did wasn't about what you could lift. It was kind of like what your physique looked like. Was it more aesthetic? hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. But does, does vanity play a problem in this? Because um, like what these, uh, yes, of course, it's about competition things, but actually it's about vanity in a lot of way, because these, especially these Mr. Olympians and mm -hmm. people like that, they're striving towards perfection. Perfection is, is unattainable. 
you know, your idea of perfection. Mm. So is it like a sort of endless game? Is that a problem when it comes to, you know, is this why people are taking a lot of steroids and all these different things? Is because they're trying to obtain something which is unattainable. And that's maybe dangerous. Um, I think, and you'll, you'll probably appreciate this, the goalposts always move. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So it's kind of like, and it's, it's always a case of what next. Right? And I think that's something that a lot of people suffer with, both in fitness, in business, in life. Mm. That, you know, when you set yourself a goal and you set yourself a target and you achieve it, there's obviously a very short period of gratification where you're like, cool, I've done that. Yeah. And then it's kind of like, there's almost like that built-in anti-climax of, well, what's mm. next? Mm. And so the goalposts do always move. And this is in every aspect of life. It's not just in, in the gym, it's in business, it's in relationships, it's whatever. Mm. Um, and I think there's a level of self-awareness that potentially doesn't exist in that elite level of sport mm. which is kind of like when it is all consuming and it's everything you've known since you were whatever yeah that what next can be broader than the next competition or the next trophy or the thing it, you know that's when you can pick a different path or use yeah. the opportunities to open any doors that you potentially might want to diversify into mm. or just being we, we've spoken about it lots in our sessions like when is enough yeah right? as in yeah when is enough for everything. Yeah. i think, I think the <laughs> that's person, the ultimate you want to get yeah, to like the person that you know we say what we're saying the other day we're saying that what what is a millionaire what is someone that's really really wealthy never have enough of it's usually enough mm. and that's why somebody if you can be happy with a cup of coffee you'll be happy with a boat but if mm. you can't be happy with a boat you won't be happy with a cup of coffee and so like where does it yeah where does it all end yeah. well know? matthew mcconaughey saw this thing where he talked about it with like um especially with money he, he was asked if money buys you happiness he says no it doesn't what money money brings you a sense of like you can pay your rent and you can mm -hmm. feed your kids and lots of people can't do that totally agree all the other stuff is just stuff that you can buy it's the stuff you want it's nothing something that you need right mm -hmm. and so that th there is this sort of desire to grow and be bigger and better is, is like this rat race that we sort of continue on but with these guys with steroids and things like that and we had james smith on who you know and he he's a good dude i love, I love james 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 yeah, gave me the uh or that he goes, London's London's fittest DILF or London, <laughs> London's best DILF. <laughs> I'll take that. I'll take that from Yeah, yeah that's what he says. Yeah. <laughs> but he talks about he he talks about steroids and things like that. Um it's funny, lots of people seem in the and that world of doing gym and, and Mr. Olympias and they, they take all these steroids, but is there massive side effects to these things? It can be. I think like, so, really what are the main side effects? Yeah, what are the main side effects? So I actually had a really interesting conversation with uh actually a neighbor of mine was giving a talk for WADA. Do you know WADA? Like the World Anti-Doping Association. Mm. She, yeah, yeah, she, I've heard she, of it, yeah. And she wanted it. It's, it's kind of what, in the Olympics and in sport, it's kind of like the governing body or the agency that's around that. And she wanted to just get my opinion on how they can take the next level of education from a from a WADA point of view into mm. the growing problem that there is with steroid abuse. Yeah. And and what I was listening to, I was listening to her and I was listening to them talking and they were talking about cheating and about, you know, it being unfair and it being this, that, and the other. And I was like, I think they're really missing the point mm. because steroids have always been in a professional sport environment, a way to shortcut and a way to cheat, right? Mm. Because if they're banned, you're not allowed to take them, you take them, you're cheating. You're bending the rules, you're playing by a different set of rules than everyone else. You look at the big problems that society and men and women are having now with steroid abuse, it's not in a professional sports setting. So that element mm. of your cheating just is completely irrelevant. Yeah. And I said to her, like, I said, you've got to change your mindset when you're looking at steroids away from performance sport, because that's kind of what most people think to mind. When people fail a drugs test, when Usain Bolt or Lance Armstrong or CJ Hunter or Marion Jones fails a drugs test, yeah. it's an elite sport. So that's kind of what it's yeah. associated with. Lance Armstrong was big. Yeah. He was like, oh, but, 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 God, that was no. a big one. That was a big oh, one. God. People also forget Lance Armstrong never failed a drugs test. <laughs> He was he never failed a drug test. He was he waking up at like caught. four a.m. in the morning to like Clever. like Clever unclot his like, blood or something. Yeah, but like he never failed a drug test. So like, uh, how do you do that? Because he, he, he plays he, a system, and you know the system. There, have you not ever watched the Lance Armstrong yeah, documentary? Have it's it wild. Ago, yeah. Yeah. It's wild. But so so my Clever my man. conversation with, with <laughs> this, smart guy, smart guy, sneaky guy, sneaky guy, shifty, shifty, crafty, crafty Lance. Yeah, Lance is a great name. Can't really be called Lance anymore, can you? Yeah. There's a couple of names. Lance he's, he's is up ruined there. It. Yeah. Lance, Adolf. Harvey. Yeah. Harvey. Harvey's gone, isn't Harvey's it? Gone. Harvey's gone. Gelaine. We said Gelaine's gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeffrey. 
Jeff, Jeffrey, I, I still think you could probably get away with. Fernando is probably all Fernando's the way. Fernando's ruined. <laughs> He's absolutely ruined it. But yeah. Um, but the, the Hannibal. Of, <laughs> Hannibal. I actually know a guy called Hannibal. Lovely guy. Lovely guy. Great chef. Um, yeah. But I was, so the, the point that I was making was that you've got to view steroids and steroid abuse in today's society as mm. a recreational drug. Yeah. Because people aren't, you know, most people that would take anabolic steroids, mm. that they put immense value on going to the gym and mm -hmm. looking and feeling a certain way. And they're probably not the same people that are going out and smashing cocaine on a weekend or mm. boozing and smoking. They're probably, it's, it's just a different form of mm. recreational drug use. And I think education around steroid use and steroid abuse needs to be very, very similar to what mm. people would use around conventional, conventional recreational drug use. Because, you know, the guys that, and girls that are taking steroids now, they're not competing in sport. No. They're taking it because they want to get more out of their gym experience or they want to be in better shape for a wedding or for a holiday to Ibiza or all that sort of stuff. And therefore, going down the hole, don't do it because it's cheating, mm. is just completely lost on them because they don't care because they're not, they're not competing with anybody. It's, it's a case of it, it. So why is it so dangerous? What, what are the... Well, it's, it's the same as any, any recreational drug. Because use. it it's like because grows abuser. your heart. It like grows everything within you. Does it, would it grow any part of your body if you... If you... <laughs> so, well... If there was something on you, but theoretically, if there was something... It would grow... It would grow, you your, to it would be grow bigger. your muscles, but it would probably... If you're a guy, it would shrink your testicles. Okay. So it, there's... So what you're actually doing is you're... By Whoever found that out is like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but it, it makes complete sense as well because what you're doing is you're altering your biochemistry, right? So most most an, sort of anabolic steroids, you're going to be putting anabolic hormones or anabolic compounds into your blood, which is then going to alter your biochemistry. So that yeah. the signals that are going to your brain from your blood and from the, from the, the, the elements of your brain, which then program hormone release, will alter. Mm -hmm. So if you're putting something like testosterone, which is, you know, it's the mother of you know anabolic steroids it's, it's kind of like the mother the mother hormone yeah you're putting exogenous testosterone into your body you're going to be reducing your body's natural ability to produce it so that it's it's what we call suppressive so you're putting testosterone into your body yeah you've got a load of testosterone going in your body but your your body's ability to produce that testosterone naturally mm. is diminishing at a rapid rate mm -hmm. so that when you then come off the the testosterone got it your body's ability to 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 kick start up again and go back to your normal levels is not there and that is a huge wow. huge thing because then you get then you get problems with low testosterone then you get problems with you know the the symptoms of low testosterone anything from drop in drop in muscle mass um increase in in body fat drop in libido drop in energy drop in uh clarity of thought so you look at people that genuinely suffer from low testosterone whether it's as a consequence of being on steroids for a long time or whether it's just people that are aging and mm. their biochemistry is, is decreasing over time. And it's a huge thing. I talked about it when I was on the podcast with James. Mm. You know, the, that HRT, TRT market is, is out there because the symptoms of low testosterone are mm. horrific. Mm. Like if you can't get out of bed in the morning because your energy level's so low because you haven't got the right biochemistry and if you can't get an erection or you don't have any sex drive or mm. you know you just have brain fog all the time and you know your muscle mass is dropping and you just and you just feel crap mm. leads to depression leads to anxiety leads so to a true. lot of other things that as a man it, it's very undermining and it can lead to big problems. So when we're yeah. looking at like what are the issues of steroid abuse it's you're fast tracking your way to that place where you will suffer from biochemical imbalances that mm. could genuinely have a, a very negative effect on your quality of life so that's, that's, insane, that, that's yeah. what wow. i would say yeah that's insane. i think for me one of the greatest things about learning about exercise and stuff like that is um is mental health and how it how it yeah. helps it is wild you know they say that doing exercises is powerful as taking antidepressant you know, there are statistics around it, right? And for me, having... I think, I think for gen pop, I think for people that are clinically depressed, maybe not. Maybe not. But maybe I, but not. I think, I think for gen pop who are who suffer from anxiety or yeah. you know, have low days and high days, I think, I think it can help. absolutely right. It mm. can help. Yeah. But but I, I, I remember for me, I hadn't trained or done it. I, I played a lot of sport growing up and then I'd stopped playing sport when I did my knee. And then when I turned 27, 
I was like, okay, someone said, do you want to come to a spin class with me? And I was like, okay, fine, I'll go to a spin class. Went spinning and it was like this crazy endorphin rush mm. that I had afterwards. I was like, oh my God, what is this like feeling? It was like I was on a roller coaster. I was like, this is insane. And so then I became going to do it. And I swear to God, for me, what it is, we talk about making your bed in the morning and doing structure in the morning. Going to the gym with you in the morning, it like, it's sets your day up and your week up and your yeah. brain up for just like accomplishing other things and and then stress does come into your life and you can deal with it in a certain way sean also gives me these drinks in the morning <laughs> okay gives me these drinks in the morning. i've said this so a million I think, times I think you're admitting jamie over drinks. there is another jamie there's downing the uh the cream one so um there's these energy drinks I'm still salivating from my morning one. <laughs> yeah. Like, this is what happens. Honestly, I'm still salivating from it. I don't know, he calls it this go juice. That's what, what do you call it, Sean? Go, go juice. I call it go juice. Go, go juice. juice. He chucks whatever he does. I think he's chucking some steroids in there. How many, the, how, many, how many of these are you on a day? About 40. 40 of these a day. So, so basically. I'm um, going to open it. It's, it's a ghost. It's a brand ghost. So what the, the, the tonic I give you in the morning is, is just because. Should um, I try it? When Take people that come in early doors, a lot of the time they're just half asleep, right? Yeah. Um, and it's rather than having a coffee <laughs> in the morning, this is basically coffee plus. So what? This is sour watermelon. Uh, the yeah. one you're about to slurp is sour watermelon. Natural and artificial. Get that in you. Have a sip. Have a big gulp of that. I might take have some of that. It's going to give you this real energy boost. It won't. It just doesn't kick in straight away. It doesn't kick in straight. Away. Oh my god! So basically, the the the, the it's, like ba it's like battery acid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whoa! Here we go. I'm gonna take some down. Here we go. Why not? Let's um, chuck it in there. But it's basically just caffeine. It's cognitive agents. It's nootropics. It make. Why does it make me salivate? Um. So that there's there's just it's basically like coffee, but with a load of other things that are designed to wake up your body, wake up your your nervous system, and basically it's nice. I don't know. What do you yeah. know? What I did the other night. Woo! I was at a, I was at a party. I wasn't at a party. I was having like. We went to a party, then we came back, had drinks at my house. And I went to the fridge and got a mixer. Yeah. I, it was a knocko. These these yeah. energy drinks. And I drank two of them with my vodka, yeah. thinking it was a mixer. Like, no wonder I couldn't sleep. Yeah, so there's 180 <laughs> milligrams of caffeine in each one of those. So you would have had close to 400 mix of caffeine. To put it, to, yeah, to put it into perspective. Like, Jamie hasn't been to bed, is what you're trying yeah. to say. Mm. Like mm. to put it into perspective. I what, haven't slept since Sean and I started training. <laughs> so is this instead of a protein shake or this is... Do you not feel the energy hitting you now? Yeah, it's pretty good stuff. <laughs> it's great stuff, that is. Epic yeah. focus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Focuses so you up there. Legendary focus. energy. Yeah, the epic focus comes Five from calories. Is yeah. that right? It's yeah. sugar-free. So it's... am I now in a calorie deficit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, just, you have to uh... eat the whole can. <laughs> just eat the metal. Yeah. Um, but truly, you know... Um, Honestly, if you could, if you could give advice for anyone out there, why they should go to the gym, why should they should start training? You know, we hear it from so many successful yeah. people and people who are, you know, calm in the mind and stuff like that. They say, just go and exercise. Why for you should people go out and start picking up a weight, going on a run, doing some yoga, whatever it is? Why? Why do you think that is? Um, I think, I think you you touched on it with getting into some sort of. I think people do well, and especially people that are, are relatively driven, do well with an element of structure, right? And I think putting incorporating some you know some time in your day where you're focusing on you i think is very important and what that looks like is completely up to you so it can be going to the gym to smash weights it can be doing a yoga class it can be going for a run whatever it is taking that time out and making a conscious effort to invest time and energy into yourself and your mm. own self-care i think is really important i think it's a really positive step to make mentally so i think that is that is obviously something that you can tick in the box as you're take you're making a decision personally to to kind of invest in the future self. Yeah. You then get obviously all the good stuff that comes with being fitter, being healthier, having more longevity, the caffeine being able rush. to tolerate stress better, all this sort of stuff. Being yeah. able to sleep better. Um, you know, there's there's so many good things about exercising and being active. It basically reduces your body's um aging process. So mm. basically, if you want to, if you want to, so Sean stay, is actually sixty-eight. Uh, yeah, I'm Benjamin Button. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing, but like, when, when a, when a that was of, a weird film. Yeah. That is so weird. That, that was a weird film. Yeah. That film, good yeah. film, a good film, but a weird film. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah. Also, like, I think with a lot of people, as they, as really they clever age, baby in the end. <laughs> <laughs> you looked a bit like Benjamin Button when you first started. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I looked like a donut. I, honestly, I was like, there's like, I, I thought I looked. Sorry to cut you off. I thought I looked great, and then we have the before and after photos, which you may have seen. On my Instagram before I looked like an honestly I looked like Homer Simpson mm. I looked like Homer Simpson and now 
<laughs> do I look like you love, you love the look of your you love the look of your reflection <laughs> oh, I know he, can't, he can't put a top on him now he's always got Sean terrible. keeps asking me to take it off in the gym take it's it off let's have another photo I'm like Sean leave me alone it's unbearable but I agree with you Johnny. I think what you were saying is so right I think I think people should put down stop drinking as much alcohol start and you know we, we the, my thing was this is that look you know I um, I pay for you uh, you as a PT, you know, for me, and that's really important to do, right? And I think a lot of the time what happens, people try and get mates to, I could try and ask you yeah, for mates yeah, yeah. rates or whatever or things like that. But no, because what you do is this is, throughout the year, I spend so much money on deliveries or whatever it is, which is kind of like, you know, not that healthy and things like that. But why not spend spending money on something that is really healthy and good for you? Mm. Like going to the gym and doing that, put it that way. So that's what I've done in my mind. And the benefits are just insane. That caffeine drink is really... He's really perked me up. Yeah. yeah. Should we all go for a run or something? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Should we put clip on mics and carry this on on a run? <laughs> but Jenny, what I want to say, uh, yeah, it, it's amazing. And, and the transformation that I've gone through... Can is I in... train with you? If you want to. Yeah, yeah. come do it. What man. sort of bunts we talking? <laughs> just, just... It's, uh, go on, how much is Jamie it? will pay for me. He Jamie said he's Jamie, happy to. Jamie will pay. He's happy well, to pay. Sure away. It's hundred grand a year. But truly, and you've got your gym, City Athletic, which yeah. is um, amazing. And if anyone is out there who wants to go and check them out, go and check them out. Go and check out Sean as well on Instagram. Um, and and true, I swear to God, I can't put this in enough. So I had Wim off on the podcast. He told me to go and do cold therapy. I was like, mm, don't really believe in it. When instead of doing cold therapy, it's yeah. the best thing I've ever done. Uh, Spencer weirdly got me, he said, you should go and do weights. I was like, mm, I do runs and stuff like that. He's yeah. like, go and do weights. Give it a go. I started training with you. It's one of the best things I've ever done. Not for vanity reasons or stuff like that, but yeah, you look better and stuff like that. But just because mentally, holy shit, it's, it's insane what it does. It really truly is. And I was one of these guys who was truly against it. Um, so Sean, I really appreciate that. And I appreciate you giving me this go juice every morning that makes you salivate and, and <laughs> feels something. I appreciate you as a friend and a trainer and all these That's things. Right. Um, and yeah, and, and 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 go and check out your gyms and go and train with you and all that kind of stuff and check out your body because it's freaking great. What's your Instagram? It's at, I keep it really simple, at Sean Stafford. At Fernando Torres. Yeah. <laughs> not, hashtag not Fernando Torres. Yeah. Um, surely, no, dude, I really appreciate it. Thank you for coming on the podcast. Well, and and having me. It's no, so fun. fun. It's been so fun. wicked, man. Um, Time flies when you're having, yeah, having fun. <laughs> anything else you want to you leave us with? You can leave us with anything you want. Anything you want to say? I just want to say thanks for having me. It's been, it's been a blast. Yeah, appreciate yeah. it. You're a legend. So fun. So Thanks, fun. buddy boy. Listen, everybody, we'll see you next week. We'll leave all the links below to check out Sean. And you can go on a minute and check out my transformation. Goes. So sexy. So sexy. What do we call it? Judge render to Tinder. There we go. <laughs> yeah, there. there we go. See you next week, everybody. Goodbye.